Hi, I want to give you kind of a rundown on how to get to your profit and loss report, also known as your income statement, and how to look at a little bit of detail within that report. So we're not going to talk about the report so much what it is and what it should be as it is. How do you get there and, and how do you learn a little bit more? So you're in your QuickBooks and it doesn't really matter what screen you start on. On the left hand side, go ahead and go to reports. And then once that opens, you're going to have a big long list of reports. Anything with a green star, it's going to show up at the top of your list. And so I'm just going to click on the word profit and loss. So the report's automatically generated and it says this year to date, which is fine. It's displaying the columns by total. So that means on the right hand side, I just see the grand total of the money in and the money out as of these date range. And what I'm going to do to make this slightly easier to read is I'm going to collapse the report. Right now, what you can see is there's these sub accounts. Um, so like we have the income account called landscaping service, and then we have sub account job materials, then we have sub account of lighting and soil and systems. If you're watching this video, you're probably kind of in the early stages of using our QuickBooks, and you may not have it set up with such a complicated layout. So I'm just going to click collapse so we have something easier to look at. So now I can see landscaping service and that's it. We're, we're just done talking about the different ways that that happens. So when you think about your profit and loss, there's kind of three chunks. The, the top chunk is your income. Here, here's all the money that you've brought in, right? You didn't get to keep it all because you had expenses, but you brought it in. And then the middle chunk is your cost of goods sold. So in this case, it's um, supplies, material, labor, everything that Craig's Landscape and Design Service had to pay in order to bring in the money that's, that's on the top, the income. And then down below are your expenses. So you kind of have a good sense of that. If you don't, I definitely encourage you to go investigate and learn a little bit more about how to read your profit and loss. But I, I want to kind of help you understand what's happening behind the scenes. Because sometimes we pull up this report and we get confused or frustrated. So when I look at this profit and loss, I can see all these different kinds of income. And then there's this thing called services. And I'm like, well, that's, that's weird because... In my pretend company file, I've set up different kinds of income. I've said, here's my design income, here's my landscaping income, my pest control. What do I have in services? That, that's like the equivalent of miscellaneous. So it's $500. If I click on this $503.55, I can see I have two invoices. Um, the first one, there's $400, and the second one is $103.55. That doesn't mean the invoice was for $400. That means that there is $400 of this invoice that went to the income account called services. So I'm, I'm still curious. I, I want to know what's happening. So I'm going to click on this $400 and it's going to open up invoice 1004. So I can see it up here, invoice 1004. And I can see that the total of my invoice was $2,000 and some change. And here I can see my $400. So I'm like, okay, I get it. My $400 was my design services. For whatever reason, when I set this up, assuming that I set it up, but I didn't because it's the pretend file. When I set this up, I said, okay, every time I have design services, every time I pick that in my drop down list to when I make my invoice, I want that money to link on the back end to services income. So that's the $400. This is important for you to know, just in case you look at something on the income here and you say, I don't understand where that came from, or I don't understand why that's there. Once you can kind of see why it's there, then you can make a decision. Do I like it? Do I want to move it? Do I need to do something different? But at least you'll, you'll say, okay, I get it. I remember I did that. I sold that, M you know, my business earned this money. The same thing is true for expenses. So we'll take a look at the advertising expense, $74.86. I can click on the dollar amount, $74.86, and I can just see how did this happen. With my eyeballs, I can see this was an expense. It's money paid to Lee Advertising. I paid it on my MasterCard, and I paid $74.86. I can click on any one of these hyperlinks to open up the, de the detail. When I open the detail, I might find that I left myself a note here, or I might find that I attached a receipt here, any variety of things. But at least I can kind of look and see. 
and I can say, all right, I remember that. That's okay. Because what happens is we get busy and we don't always remember how we spent the money. So this is just a chance to kind of pop in here and look at stuff and fix it if we need to. At the bottom, I can see I miscellaneous expense of $2,600. That doesn't really make any sense. That doesn't tell me anything. I would encourage you not to use miscellaneous or uncategorized. You do yourself a favor and put your money spent into the category it belongs in. Put it into a category that's logical. This profit and loss isn't just to entertain yourself. This is so that you as a business owner can see what's happening with my business. I brought in $10,000, but I don't have it. Where did it go? And then you can look at it. You can go, oh, right. I spent money in these different areas. Oh, I took some money out for me or I bought some equipment. I really want you to be in the habit of not using miscellaneous because miscellaneous doesn't tell you anything. So in this example, we have 2,600 miscellaneous. I'm going to click on that dollar amount and to see what it is. Well, I can see that um, there's masonry and there's an insurance agency. I'm going to pick the insurance agency for the purpose of this example and fix something. So when I click on this $2,000, then I can see the bill. And so insurance agency, $2,000, categories is miscellaneous. Well, you and I both know this isn't miscellaneous. When I pay the insurance company, I, I pay them for some sort of insurance. And so I, I just typed in insurance to shortcut it. You certainly can scroll up and down until you find it. If this is a sample company file, I don't know what kind of insurance they paid for $2,000. I'm just going to pick insurance and I'm not going to worry about picking whatever sub account it's supposed to be. So I'm going to click on save and close in the lower right hand corner. It says this transaction is linked to others. What that means, and you can kind of see it in the background here, is that there's a payment made. So what we're looking at is a bill. So we entered a bill and then we paid the bill. And this warning says there's a transaction that's linked. Well, the link is the payment, so it's okay to say yes, you're not messing anything up. So now I can see miscellaneous is down to $600. I can click on back to report summary, and I can see insurance is $2,200. If I click on this $2,200, I can see that it's both of my insurance payments. So every so often you find yourself in a situation where you've made a small mistake on your profit and loss, or any of your other organizing, you can just pop in here and fix it and then nobody will know and it'll be okay. What I would encourage you to do is periodically come up here and display columns by, change it to say months, and then come over here and run report. What you're going to do is you're going to see if there's any anomalies. So you're, you're going to know your business and anomalies will stick out to you because you know your business. I don't know your business, so when I do this, I'm just looking to see, is there anything strange? Is there anything that I need to ask the client like, hey, I don't know about this or anything I should look into further? So things I want to look into further, I just click on it and look at it and I say, oh yeah, that makes sense. And, and things that I think, man, that's really strange. Maybe I should talk to my client. This is a really good example. Um, it looks like in April, my pretend client paid $140 for utilities, but they didn't have any rent expense. And then in May, they had a rent expense and they had even more utilities. So I, I might ask, how did you pay for your rent in April? Did it come out of personal money? Or this utilities you paid, did you have to prepay something? Or did you accidentally use the company credit card to pay your personal utilities? None of this is a judgment. It's just, I'm just looking at this saying, did I make any mistakes? Did my client make any mistakes? Do we need to reorganize anything? Because the, the two things that happen with the profit and loss is that we look to make sure everything is kind of in the right buckets. And then you look at the profit and loss as a business owner to kind of get a sense of the health of your business. Ideally, you're going to have a profit, right? So there's an indicator of health. But then there's also things that happen like, you know, what are your trends? Are you spending more than you thought you were? Are you bringing in what you thought you would? All sorts of things happen. So it's important to look at the profit and loss. It's important to know how to get more information out of it. If you say, I don't understand where this number came from. It's important to know how to fix something if you accidentally put it in the wrong bucket. And that's what this video is designed to do. Just give you a sense of, you know, here's what I can find. Here's how I can get more information. Here's how I can expand my view. If you feel like getting extra creative, you can always click on customize in the upper right hand corner. And you have all these different ways that you can customize stuff. So over here, you can change the columns, right? We changed it to display by month. You can have it display differently. You can do comparisons. You can do percentages. Whatever makes your heart happy. Mm -hmm.